antes que nada amigos, eh, muy buenos días eh, De repente, bueno, a uno le invitan a conducir este tipo de eventos y, y pues no puedes creer que es trabajo porque pues yo soy fan ¿no? de, de la saga como muchos de ustedes eh, Antes que nada les quiero decir que la idea de esto es que hagamos una especie de charla Yo tengo muchas preguntas de distintos medios de ustedes, voy a estar como moderador en esta ocasión Y también hay compañeros de la prensa de toda Latinoamérica que han enviado las preguntas. Entonces, la idea es que hagamos una especie de pimponeo y que se ponga esto interesante. Eh, lo que nos trae aquí es la Casa del Dragón. Sin duda alguna, desde mi punto de vista, eh, estuve en, en la Comic Con el fin de semana pasado y en cuestión de televisión, pues fue el evento a presentarse y siento que es el evento de la temporada. Van a poder ver el primer episodio el próximo 21 de agosto por HBO Max. Y para esto, pues tengo el honor de presentarles a dos de los actores eh, que participan en este serial. Eh, soy muy fan de uno de ellos en particular y ustedes lo saben por la serie de Doctor Who. Y entonces es un, un honor de verdad que nos acompañe el señor Matt Smith, quien interpreta a Damon Targaryen en La Casa del Dragón. Welcome to Mexico City, Matt. Welcome. Y el señor Fabian Frankel, quien interpreta a Kristen Cole en esta serie que es La Casa del Dragón. Fabián. Hola. Hola. Fabián habla perfecto español. No, ya no, lo no, escuché. Hablas, hablas un poquito. Hey guys, uh, first, uh, we're going to uh, do a mix of uh, questions because we have a lot of them. Uh, we have questions fr from Latin America, from, from media from Latin America, sí. and of course, Mexico City. Uh, but the first one, it's mine. I was in, in San Diego Comic Con and I was in the panel of La Casa del, del Dragón. George R. R. Martin was in the panel actually And he said he saw nine of the ten episodes of this series, and he was very happy with them. Does it matter, as an actor, to have the approval of the creator of this whole universe? Matt. Well, well yeah. I mean, ideally, you want him to like it, because if he doesn't, it's a bad start. Um, so, yeah, of course, you know, we're, we're, we're really thrilled that George enjoyed it. Um, he's obviously a good audience for it. He understands the material because he's, he's originated it all. So yeah, you know, hopefully that's a good start and everyone else can see all 10 and, and follow suit. Fabian? Yes. Sí. Um, how many of the episodes have you seen? We've seen one. Just one? Just the same as, well, the same as some people here probably, yeah. What was the re your reaction when you saw the first episode? I was very, pr I was very proud of everyone. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite surreal when you make a show like that, um, and you have, you know, like this cast of friends that you make throughout the show, and you, you, you know, you, you experience this whole thing together, and then you finally get to see it, and it all comes together. I felt very proud of all the actors in the um, show. Would it be okay to stop the flashes now? Niños, podemos, yo creo que parar un poco de tomar fotografías con el flash. Gracias. Está perfecto. Gracias. Matt, Matt, and uh, this question is for, for both. Um, how did you approach the character? Because you, uh, you have a lot of material. You have the books, of course. You have the scripts. You have the, the TV show. Ha, uh, as an actor, how, how do you start constructing the character? Fabs, darling. <laughs> Age before beauty. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we had the books, like you said, so that was the first thing I, you know, I went to after reading the scripts. And, you know, you try and... At least for, for me, I, I looked at the original show, characters who were from Dawn, uh, like Oberon Martell, or, you know, uh, and I looked at sort of the way that uh, he played everything. I don't think I've done as much of a good job as he has. But well, no, I don't agree. I think you've done a brilliant job. Well, thank you. Um, fa he's fabulous, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, you know, you kind of, um, also you're kind of learning on the, on the way. You know, you have like this amazing cast of actors. You sort of look at how they do everything and then steal. Mm -hmm. As much as you can. In your case, Matt? Yeah, look, you know, we've, we've got um, the book, which is a great source, obviously. Mm -hmm. the, we had all 10 scripts really early. 
And for me, it was like any other process. Um, uh, you, you try and investigate and mine and understand as much as you can about the world and the context of the thing that you're in. And then, uh, you know, you throw caution to the wind. I mean, luckily with a character like Damon, what I liked about him is there's a real ambiguity to him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing's black and white. There's always these gray exactly, areas yeah. in the middle. And I, and I thought there was something very interesting in there. You can take it, you know, it, it, it allows for a degree of invention. Exactly, I agree with you. Uh, characters, they're not like heroes or villains, you know, that's one of the assets of the books because they're yeah. so uh, complex. They're very grayish, which is good yeah. you know, for the audience and the readers. Um, uh, this question is from Reforma and it says, when Game of Thrones was released, there was a lack of fantasy shows on TV. And of course, Game of Thrones was a total blast. Now, seems there are a lot of competition, no? like Rings of Power, Wheel of Time, Star Wars, the Marvel shows. What are the strange, uh, what are the assets uh, of La Casa del Dragon, the, the, the House of the Dragon? The what can make this show more attractive? Well, I don't know if it's more attractive. We're very excited to see Lord of the Rings. Matt and I are. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we are. We are, and we got to meet some of them, some of the cast at Comic Con, and they were, uh -huh. you know, it was a nice feeling. They were excited about our show, and we were excited about their show. At least on the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Maybe they were <laughs> pretending, but we don't know. But we are. Yeah, no, we are. Um, you know, I think that like. Our show has an amazing cast, it really does, and like, especially as a young actor sort of starting in my career, to get to work with the likes of you know, Matt and Reese and Paddy and Eve Best mm -hmm. and Steve, actors that, you know, that I've looked up to from when I started acting. I, I think the acting's really good, I do, ha having seen it. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I can't speak for all the other shows, but I do think that there's a re it's a really special cast that we have assembled for this show. I had the chance to see uh, to saw, uh, Evest on the stage. She's wonderful. Yeah, amazing. She's, She's amazing She's actress. She's wonderful, yeah. It was an Eugene O'Neill play, uh, something like that in London, but it, it yeah. was great. Well, the feeling in the panel in Comic-Con, uh, for me, it was a sense like you guys were a family. You know, yeah. you, you always were staring at each other, you yeah. know? The questions were very bizarre, of course. You yeah. Know? But, they were, uh, they, but it was a feeling that it was a sense that you made a family. In yeah, the show. I think we really did. I think there was a real sense of camaraderie that came because it's a long shoot. It took a year. It was grueling physically, mentally, mm -hmm. creatively. And, um, you know, I think on some level, the dynamics of art have imitated life or life has imitated art, whichever way you want to look at it. And we, we have, cr there is a real sense of family and team and led by Paddy, really, and um, we all, you know, we laughed. We laughed our asses off, because you need to, because the you material was so you dark. You have to be funny, you know? You got it, man. On day by Sometimes day. we laugh too much, Yeah, the, ske the, ske yeah. the schedules are hard, you know, of work. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, uh, Tomatazos is asking this. In Game of Thrones, we saw different family dynamics. The union of the Starks, of course, and the fragmented of the Lannisters, the Targaryens, are the only ones we didn't meet. How would you describe the family dynamics of the Targaryens? Well, the family dynamics of the Targaryens are deeply, deeply complicated. <laughs> um, I suppose what's interesting about them is on one level, they're extremely complicated. They're doing quite extreme things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've read the books, you know the lengths that some of the characters go to within the family, outside of the family. You know, they're a, <laughs> yeah, they're a strange bunch. But, but on the same, uh, sort of by the same breath, they're a very normal family. And that's what we're honing in on, is the kind of the domestic nature of them. And, and our show slightly different to Thrones. That was like bouncing around lots of different worlds. This is a much more localized story mm -hmm. uh, about, essentially, you know, a couple of families. Mm -hmm. And for you, Fabian, how, how can you describe the dynamics of the family, of the clan? Well, f from the outside, because I'm not a part of the Targaryen uh -huh. family per se, they're, they're a pretty messed up bunch, to be honest. They are. 
Um, they need a lot of therapy. Yeah, they, we they need a lot of they need therapy. therapy. Yeah, we th yeah. Matt thinks there should be one episode where they just go to family therapy and see just how group therapy yeah, for yeah. the episode, <laughs> which I would pay a lot of money to watch. I'll say that. Uh, without giving spoils, um, there was a certain scene favorite of yours in this season. I, I, well, I mean, in the first episode, you'll see that me and Fabian. Um, it's not giving anything away. By no, saying I don't that, think is so. It? Yeah, no. we, is have it? they seen it? Well, I don't know. No, maybe I shouldn't give too much away. But well, needless to say, me and me and Fabs have a really great scene and sort of composition of scenes in the first episode, which was good fun because it was really physical. Yeah, we have a fight basically. I'm not giving too much away there, am I? No, I don't maybe think so. Maybe I am. Oh well. Um, yeah. yeah. And Fabian, for you. Uh, I lo there was a there was a bunch of young actors who came in, um, you and Mitchell and Tom Glencarney and Fia, who I got to act with a lot. So anytime I was in scene, they, you know, they were all kind of. I mean, Tom's actually a very established, but you know, you and and Fia are pretty fresh out of well, acting school in Fia's case, and you and's been doing it for a little bit of time. But I thought, you know, anytime I got to act with them, I really enjoyed it a lot. Mm. Uh, this is a question for Matt de El Clarín uh, from Argentina. Matt, the Targaryens are beings, how to say, quite particular, singular. What do you think are the essential characteristics which are transmitted in their genes from generation to generation? Could I ask you to repeat the word before characteristic, the essential the, uh, characteristics? The essential characteristic of the dynasty, of the, of the wow. Targaryens, and what do you think it passes from gene to gene? Well, you know, there's a theory that when, you, when, a, when a Targaryen is born, mm -hmm. they say you can flip a coin, and on one side is greatness, and on the other side is madness. Now, in Damon's case, I think the coin is still in the air, and it hasn't even landed, and it's in some sort of strange vortex. But I think in that greatness and in that madness, it, a lot is passed down. You take Viserys, for instance, and there is a sense of greatness to the way he rules, his power, his generosity, his, uh, you know, but I, I think what's passed down is a ruthless, violence, to be honest, in the Targaryens. Mm. I think all of them uh, sort of have that in them somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I know dragons play a big part in, the, mm. in, in this his story. Um, can you explain technically, as an actor, mm. how do you ride a dragon? Well, they put you on a plinth, which is about 20 foot in the air, and it's sort of like a mechanical bull that you get in a pub um, or a bar, whatever. And then uh, y y it's, it's on sort of animatronics, as it were, and they can move you around with a remote control, so you're doing this. Uh, and then they fire a load of wind and rain at you, and you know, you pretend you're on a dragon. It's pretty much like that. It's quite good fun, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you came from a very rich uh, theater background. I, I had the opportunity to see you in American Psycho. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah, I was no, there. What? I was in what? the theater. What? Yeah. And I don't know in your case, Fabian, but uh, for me, also the sense of this story, it's very Shakespearean, you know. Mm, that's very it true. seems like it's a tragedy, you know, with action. Does being an uh, uh, actor trained on the stage helps in some way to deliver your characters in this type of productions? I mean, Matt and I both came from theater. Um, Matt, it's done a lot more than I have. But I did do drama school, I guess, for f yeah. four odd years. I'm older than you as well, that's yeah. fine. Well, just. Yeah. Um, I think that it helps a lot. And there were, you know, there were these really amazing long group scenes where all the cast are together, and I think that uh, there's a rhythm to those scenes that is very theatrical. And in order to sort of like hit the beats of the scene, in, in our case, we had a lot of really good theatre. Uh, you know, Paddy's done theatre, Eve's done theatre, Reese has done theatre. Matt's done theatre, a lot of the young actors all came from theatre, so there was definitely a feeling of understanding that r rhythmically there is a certain beat that needs to be hit every time you're doing a, a big group scene, and I think that um, theatre helped a lot, certainly in my case. Mm. Having seen the first episode, how different is the tone from the first series to this one? Well, look, we're not reinventing the wheel with this, uh -huh. you know. It's, it's almost like 
It's almost like a kind of second album for a band. You second know? album. It's like a second band. album for a band. Yeah. We're, we're a very good second album. A very good second album. Maybe even a better second album. You never know. <laughs> we're trying to deliver the hits, but we're trying yeah. to create something original. But you know, I think tonally it's in the same world. But there's a different set of actors. It's a different story. It's set 200 years before or whatever it is, 170. So it, in, invariably things are going to feel a bit different. And it's about a family that we we've not explored. Uh huh. Guys, uh, tell me working with Miguel Sapochnik. Uh, he had directed a very important episodes in the first series, like the Battle of the Bastards. Yeah. Uh, I bet he's a very creative you know, director on the set. Uh, how can you describe uh, the relationship with him? You know, he knows exactly what he wants, which I think as an actor is a kind of a dream because you're not going in there, I mean, that, you know, that. There's an element of wanting to figure things out for yourself, which he lets you do, but when he's directing, he knows exactly where the camera's gonna be, he knows exactly how he wants the scene to play out, and then within that spec, you know, I said a thing to Matt earlier, it felt a little bit like working with Miguel, it was like, we got given the lyrics, but we got to write the melody, that's what it felt like. Mm. And for you, Matt? Yeah, I, I think he's put it very aptly, I think he, he, um, he understands how to deliver that show really, really well. And, and um, I think you'll see from his episodes, he's directed them with, with real flair. I'm, I'm trying to be careful not giving spoil, spoils on, yeah. on the story. But as Americans say, in a nutshell, how can you describe each one your character and what they play in this game? Well, what, how would you describe... Is, well, Chris, there's Chris a lot to you know. There's a lot to still to come for Kristen as the season goes on. I can't say too much, but I think that he is. Um, he becomes a very integral part of the Targaryen rise to power, and um, similarly to Matt, his coin is still in the air, and he's falling on either side throughout the show. Yeah, and for you, Matt. Well, look, Damon is. Uh, which is why I was interested in playing him. He's, he's, he's intensely complicated. I still don't really think I know him now or quite where he's going to go. And I guess what I loved about it was he's sort of, it's like he's walking on a knife, not even on a knife's edge. It's like he's walking on the blade of a knife. Mm -hmm. And at any point, he could fall that way or he could fall that way and he could slice himself on the way down and then sort of crawl back on the knife, make his hands bloody. You know, it's, it's all about violence and blood and madness. But deep down, I think there's something so fragile about the idea of someone trying to balance themselves mm -hmm. on this blade for the whole of their life. He's, I think he's a deeply fragile person. What can we expect of House of, of the Dragon, like I said, El Dragon, as, a, as an audience? Well, look, I think we've tried to create something that has scale, that feels original, like I said, that delivers the hits. You can expect dragons and blonde wigs and you know, backstabbing and violence and lust and love and, you know, war, fear, pain, all the stuff that you got and you enjoyed in Game of Thrones, I, I think is evident here, just told in a, through a slightly different lens. Fabian? What do you think, Fabs? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to follow on from that. Mm. I think you can expect a great deal of violence and a great deal of love, and I think that that is what the center of the show is. Mm. I think it's about violence and love, ultimately, between the characters. Uh, uh, doing this series, it was, uh, uh, did you guys, in any point, have this sense of expectation of the audience, you know, like a pressure in some way? Because uh, the audience can be very difficult judge. You know yeah, I mean? of course. Uh, the ending of, of, of Game of Thrones was very controversial. And mm. some people even think that maybe these series are going to explain some things that were kept on the air on the first one, you know what I mean? Mm. We're not going to give away anything, you know, it spoils, but uh, the audiences are expecting some scenes can connect to the Game of Thrones series. Can we ex expect something like that? Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to speak too much to that. I think, you know, obviously we're set a long time before a Game of Thrones. We're telling a different story about a different family. Um, but look, the pressure from the audience is a good one. The fans are really passionate. They follow it. They followed it. It's, you know, they own it to a certain degree. And we've really tried our best to create something that we feel will be entertaining for them. Now, whether it is or it isn't, 
it's not really up for us to decide. That's that's up to you guys and to them. And you know, fingers crossed it is. But if it isn't, we'll dust ourselves down and fight another day. Mm. I've been in Comic Con and watching these panels. I saw. I was also in the Sandman and other shows. Uh, for me, it, it was very emotional because uh, we were living difficult times. You know what I mean uh, with yeah. the COVID thing, and doing this type of production in this scale, it, they are, it's so hard. You know, can you explain a little bit how it was uh, uh, the day by day shooting of, of La Casa del Dragón? Well, you know, like like everyone here is wearing a ma you know a mask over half their face. It's a it's a weird feeling. Um, to step onto a set and so much of what we experience as actors day to day is interacting with crew, interacting with each other and getting to know everyone through that way. But here you've got just, you know, half their face, which is um, which makes for a difficult thing. But I thought the COVID team were amazing on our show. And, um, you know, at Leavesden they had their own testing site, so everyone was getting tested the whole way. But I think we felt incredibly lucky to be working. So, so many of my great friends who are incredibly talented actors haven't worked for two years or lost jobs, um, roles that they should have played and weren't able to or plays that were cancelled. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's a, I feel incredibly lucky um, to have been able to work during this pandemic and uh, to, to have been on a show that enabled us to, to you know, have a, have a career at this point when so many people haven't. And for you, Matt? Yeah, it was, it was challenging, but, you know, I sort of echo what Fabian says, really. It was, uh, it felt like a privilege to be working. But it made it more difficult. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it made the shoot longer and, and harder to complete. But compared to what other people were going through, it was, you know, it wasn't so bad. People were losing their lives, becoming really ill. It was a crazy time, right? Yeah. Uh, GQ magazine is asking this for you sp uh, specifically, Matt. How challenging was to create a character as something new when Daenerys Targaryen was such an iconic figure around the world? Well, um, it's a bit like the show, really. You know, you're inheriting a legacy and trying to uh, trying to add to it, I suppose. I mean, it didn't it didn't come into my thinking at all because, it's, you know, kind of Daenerys is my great 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 niece or <laughs> granddaughter or whatever it is. So she's just a twinkle in the eye at the moment. What's gone before is, you know. We, we, so, so that gives you a, d a degree of license, really. It, 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 didn't, it didn't enter my thinking at all. Yeah. Also in the panel, I, uh, someone said that uh, Martin was very close to the production. W was he? I think he, he, I'm sure he was with Ryan and the writers. Okay. You know, it was different for us because he wasn't able to fly out to the UK while we were shooting. So we didn't actually get to meet him till then. But I'm sure that behind the scenes he had, you know, I'm sure him and Ryan were discussing a lot about the show, but we, we weren't privy to that. Okay, SDP Noticias uh, is, is asking, taking into account how extensive the song and nice and fire universe is, why do you think it's important for House of the Dragon, La Casa del Dragon, to cover the Dance of Dragons passage specifically? And not other, another story such as Robert's Rebellion or Aergon Targaryen Conquest. Well, well, it's, well, a, it's a very geeky yeah. question. No, no, but I think it's just uh, it's a really interesting part of the book. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting point in the history. Really interesting of the, point in the history as well. Yeah, because mm. you have, you know, for the for the first time ever, you have a a king who's going to name his daughter to be heir to the Iron Throne, and that's a massive. You know, it's the first time that happens in the book, so. Why, you know, that, that feels very relevant, yeah, especially today. I think that's why. How, uh, guys, how did you get this gig? It was it easy for you to get this, the role? Uh, was it, was it, <laughs> was it um, easy for well you? It, no, it definitely wasn't easy, I don't think. It was, it was a lot of luck, I think. I kept it always is I, a bit of luck, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a lot of luck. I think that, I, well, I kind of felt like I was dreaming when they t told me. They, I got on a call with Ryan and Miguel. I'd done an audition. I got on a call with Ryan and Miguel, the creators. Um, it was like late at night, English time. And they said, um, they kind of talked to me about like the tape and what they thought of it and all this stuff. And then they said, would you like to do it? And I thought they were joking. <laughs> um, and I, I ended up sort of feeling incredibly faint, drinking a lot of tequila and um, calling my mum. <laughs> Um, Código Spaghetti is asking this, how, 
of Stargarian was one of Game of Thrones' favorites. What do you think, Saul? The blonde wigs <laughs> and the dragons. <laughs> Everyone likes a blonde wig, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think I think that you know they're a very striking family, aren't they? There's a, there's a sort of um, and and you know in, invariably the dragons add to the myth. This is a very interesting question, also to you, Matt. You have been you have been Doctor Who. I was telling Matt uh, backstage that he's pretty well known here in Mexico because of Doctor Who. The yeah. I, I I can't believe I'm sitting next. Next really? to wow. the eleven doctors. Me, me, me neither. Oh, me. I'm so I, pleased to be in Mexico the, oh, City. Like, it's, like so many people who've come here, I who are my friends, are like, it's the best city in the world. So tonight, I'm going to check it out, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is your first time here in Mexico. My first time in Mexico. I mean, I've been to different parts of Mexico, but never to Mexico City. Yeah. Uh, and for you, Fabian. Same. The first time I, when I told my friends that I was flying, I found. I'm going to say something. I found out that I was coming here. Lo yesterday morning, yeah. we woke up from the premiere in London. I got a call from Matt at 9 a.m. He went, darling, come to Mexico. <laughs> and I was... Because we were meant to come with Emma, but they couldn't yeah. come because... Yeah, yeah. Emma, yeah, anyway, so... They just couldn't come. I can't believe I'm here. I feel like I'm in a dream right now, to be They're honest. They're planning to go to Xochimilco. Do you think it's a good idea for them? Or what's, if what's you want to rec recommend them some, yeah. somewhere else. Somewhere fun. Shout out some they're, open. Fun. they're open. They're um, <laughs> open. Uh, well, the question, Matt, it's very interesting. Yes. It's, uh, you have been on Doctor Who, uh, one of the greatest TV series of all time. Um, I think Terminator, so. Marvel Universe. Uh, what attracts you to be in sagas, you know, in French. Is that, is that a coincidence? Is that, yeah. is that luck or is something that you look for? No, I for? think it's just luck and timing, as a lot of acting is. Are you available? You know, is there, have you got an aptitude for the part? And, you know, can you add something to it? And it was, yeah, it came up. I was lucky with Doctor Who. I was, I was at the right age, in the right time. And um, mm. my mum, weirdly, I had a long scarf at university. And when that part was announced that it was you know, that it was free, she said to me, you should be the next Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. And then she said, I think you will be the next Doctor She Honestly, she sort of, she actually said that to me. So, yeah, it was luck, I think. Yeah. Uh, they want to end it. Um, this no. is the last, the last question. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to do my best here. Um, why do you think the George R. R. Martin universe is such popular all over the world and can touch everyone in the planet? I think that there are certain themes that relate to everyone. It doesn't matter the circumstances in which those themes are taking place, but you know, most people have a family, most people fall in love, most people feel anger, most people feel anxiety. And he writes characters that feel all those things. So, and he puts them in this magical world where there are dragons and incredible dresses and bleach blonde hair. Um, so you're kind of taking a bit of both, you know, the, the fantasy mixed with reality, and I think that's what our show does. And Matt? Well, I think there's, you know, look, he writes great characters. There's huge depth and rip richness to the sort of, to the world he builds. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think he takes from history. I think he takes sort of literal historic events and, you know, adds a fantasy layer to them, and in that process, something magical happens. And he's... Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's just he's a wonderful writer. We're yeah. very lucky to have him. Thank you very much, guys, for Thank this you. wonderful Thank you. session yeah. this morning in Mexico City. Have a great time. We will, yes. man. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Muchas Matt gracias. Thank you. Fabian Franco. Gracias. Thank you much, guys. Guys, uh, they want...